Hi everyone, welcome back to Catherine's Plates. We are going to start off by making chocolate covered cherries. Now I've scoured the internet to find a recipe and there are so many out there in so many ways, shapes, and forms, but I figured out how to bring this to you simple, easy, and very delicious. So with chocolate covered cherries, you've got the cherry and then you've got the dough formation, which is kind of a sugar base, and then you've got the chocolate, so that's it. So the first thing we're gonna do in a large bowl is we're gonna take six tablespoons of softened butter and we're gonna beat this on a medium speed until it's nice and fluffy and creamy. We're gonna add one and a half teaspoons of milk. We're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of some vanilla extract. And then we're gonna add one teaspoon of the juice from our maraschino cherries. All right, now this is half a teaspoon here, so I'm using two of those to get the one teaspoon. We're gonna mix that up together. Okay, now we're gonna start mixing it again as we're incorporating two and a half cups of some powdered sugar. Okay, we're just going to take our spatula here and roll the dough and see if that's where we want it. I think what I'm going to do is add a little more juice to this because we want a dough, but we don't want a very thin dough either. So I'm going to add about a quarter teaspoon more. Okay, we have a nice crumb here, and then that is perfect. That's what we want to have happen. We want to smash it together. Okay, this is a really good dough here. You see how it's coming together? That's why you don't want to put too much liquid in there because you don't want it too wet or it won't form onto our cherries. Now, using a clean hand, we're just going to form a ball with this. Okay, that's what we're looking at right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just put some wrapping over it, some saran wrap or some press and seal, whatever you have. We're just gonna place this in the refrigerator for 30 minutes to kind of help it solidify some more. And during that time, let me show you what we're gonna do with the cherries. Okay, so these are the cherries. Now, these are maraschino cherries. Now, you wanna get the ones with the stems on them if you can find those. Now, I found them easily at Walmart and it's just their brand, great value here. It's gonna be really easy if you get the stems on them because then you can dunk them in the chocolate. If not, then you can use forks, so don't worry about that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring a kind of a cutting board over here and I've got some paper towels lined about three deep. <laughs> And what we're gonna do is dry these cherries off for the 30 minutes that our dough is in the refrigerator. So you can see there's the stems right there. So we're gonna lay them on the paper towels. And then what we're gonna do is lay more paper towels on here. Now be careful when you pull these out of the jar so you don't pull the stems off. And don't try to eat them along the way. I'm <laughs> being good. I know. There's, there's, they say there's 27 cherries in this jar here. So that's what we're going to be making. Now, since we have a few with no stems, I'll be able to show you how to do those without the stems. I think that's it. All right. So then what you want to do is grab some more paper towels and lay them on there and then just very carefully just kind of blot them. You can move them around a little bit. 
We just want to get that excess juice off. Now, as soon as I pull that dough out, we're going to come back and we're going to work on that. Okay, so I had pulled the dough out of the refrigerator. Now, I had just moved the ball of dough into a smaller bowl there so I could have room in the refrigerator for it. So I'm just using like a melon baller or you can use a spoon and you want about half a teaspoon. And so I'm going to roll it in there about that much here. And then with your clean hands, you're going to kind of roll it into a ball and leave it in the palm of your hand. And then you're just going to smush it around till you thin it out, just like that. And then we're going to take a cherry the stem side up and then wrap that dough all around your cherry all the way up to the stem and then you can kind of just roll it just a little bit in your hands to get a round shape like that and I'm just going to place it right here which I already have one going right there alright so you're just going to take some of your dough You're going to roll it into the palm of your hand and then just use your thumb and just kind of smash out the sides, making a circle. You're going to take your cherry right into the center, stem side up, and then bring up the dough. And then just work with it until you get it all the way up to the stem. Make sure it's all covered all the way around. And then I just kind of roll it to give it a smooth shape, being careful of the stem, just like that. Okay, here we go. Luckily, I had two more hands, my husband. Yay! <laughs> he helped, and he also found the other jar of cherries that we had in the refrigerator that I used for the pineapple upside down cookies that I made with cake mix. So we had extra cherries, and those didn't have the stems. So as you can see, you can see the ones with the stems, and then you can see the ones without the stems. I made that one. <laughs> so let's go ahead now and start getting our chocolate ready. For the chocolate, now I'm going to be melting some semi-sweet chocolate chips for these. Now you can either melt your chocolate in the microwave or you can do a double boiler, which is what I'm going to do today to kind of keep the chocolate nice and smooth and liquidy, okay, and that way it doesn't just kind of clump all together. So I'm bringing a big pot of water to a boil. And I've only filled it up about one third of the way. And then once that comes to a boil, I'm going to put a glass bowl that's, you know, heat resistant over the pot and let it hang there. And then we're going to start with the chocolate chips. Okay, we have a nice simmer going on. What I'm going to do is go ahead and place my bowl onto the pot. We're going to add our chocolate chips. Now this is a 10 ounce bag. We'll go ahead and add that while the bowl is getting nice and warmed up. Now to get a nice smooth consistency with our chocolate and to get a nice shine on it, we're going to be using some Crisco shortening and I'm probably going to put about, we're going to start off with one tablespoon and see how that works. This should do it right here. And then you're just going to use a spatula and start moving the chocolate chips around until it's nice and melted and smooth. Oh. Gonna have fun trying to find that chocolate chip. You're gonna have fun? <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm gonna have fun. <laughs> I've tried to find your chip before. Oh, I hope it doesn't melt down in there. Oh, well, I'm it sure will. it will. It will. Now I like the double boiler way because it keeps your chocolate nice and warm so you don't lose that smoothness of it. So once we get this to a nice smooth consistency, we're going to turn our burner down to a low. That way it keeps it nice and warm. 
Now what you want to do also is start preparing a pan with some wax paper, some parchment paper, or you can use like these little cups right here, which I'm going to use. So as I'm dunking the cherries, they're going to go right into this. These are one and a half inch paper cups that you can use for like Christmas candy, which we're going to be using. Okay, now we have a nice smooth consistency. Now I did add just some extra Crisco shortening to this. This is the, what we're looking for right here. Nice and smooth. We're going to turn this down to a low. And we're going to start taking our cherries and we're just going to kind of swirl it around. Going sideways to sideways like that. Drip off any excess. And then my husband's going to hold the cup over here and I'm going to place it right in there. Just like that. All right. We kind of got an assembly line going on here, so no, I thought I was just being nice one time. One time. Oh no. Once you start something, there you go. There you go. Okay, I'm going to complete the ones with the stems and then we'll work on the ones without the stems. And just make sure you shake off any excess. I was shaking with you. Ooh, All right. That was hot. We're going to show you what this looks like. There you go. Right there. And these are going to set up in these little cups right there. Okay, so I found a really good way to do this with the cherries that don't have the stems on them. I'm going to use a toothpick here and just poke the cherry. And then I'm going to run it into the chocolate here. Pick it up. We're going to take some of that excess chocolate off. And then we're going to drop it into the cup. Just like that. All right. There is my chocolate covered cherry. I'm going to go ahead and cut this open for you so you can see what the inside looks like. right there this is the solid mass right here now if you want it to be really liquidy what you would do is you would make these and then you would hold on to these for a couple of weeks and what happens is the inside sugar will kind of loosen up and become liquid and that's why when you cut into it it'll just pour out kind of like the chocolate covered cherries do so there you go right here i like them like this they taste really good i'm going to try one for you okay so i've got my mom's chocolate covered cherries boxed up in this pretty container here don't those look nice you can just box these up and then send them out to anybody <laughs> okay and i showed you cutting this one up right here so i'm going to try it mm. there's the holidays on a plate right here what a delicious treat to make with your family your kids mm. get your friends to come over and help you mm -hmm. <laughs> those are so delicious all right, we are starting the holidays off really good. Buckeye pretzel peanut butter bites. Okay, we're going to start by making the peanut butter filling. Now, in a large bowl, I have one cup of peanut butter, any flavor that you want. Now, I'm just using this right here. Now, to that, we're going to add half a cup of softened butter. We're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. Now this is optional. If you don't want that extra vanilla flavor in there, then you don't have to put it in there, but we're going to do it because we like it like that. And then we're going to add one and a half cups of some powdered sugar. 
That's what's going to sweeten this up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our electric hand mixer that I have right over here and we're going to blend this on low speed until we get the, the powdered sugar kind of mixed in. And then what we're going to do is just ramp it up to a medium speed and get it nice and creamy. Okay, so we're going to start by using these tiny twist pretzels and they look like this like you know little bows <laughs> this is what we're going to be using you're going to need about 72 of these and these will make <laughs> you want this one it'll make about 36 treats with this batch right here so what you're going to do is you're going to first off have you a pan ready with some parchment or some wax paper, anything like that, that will hold your little pretzels right here. And then you're going to use a one inch cookie scoop, or you can even use like a tablespoon. And we're just going to pull some of the mixture here. We're going to place it right in the center of our pretzel. And then we're going to take another pretzel. And then we're going to kind of push it down just a little bit until it kind of comes out of the holes of your pretzels on the top and the bottom. And I'm going to show you a close up here in just a second. And then you just want to lay these on your sheet pan. Like that. Okay, we got our pretzel. I'm just going to scoop some of that mixture out. Put it right in the center. If you push it onto the pretzel, it'll help pull the mixture out of your scoop there. All right, get your other pretzel, place it on top, and just squish just a little bit, just like that. And then just lay it on your sheet pan. Okay, I'm going to place these in my refrigerator or freezer just until we get the chocolate melted and ready to dip these into. So, I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm going to be doing the double boiler method to melt my chocolate chips here. Now, I'm using a white morsels here. Now, I'm bringing a large pot of water that's about one third of the way full to a boil, and then I just put in a glass bowl that will kind of fit the pot in here and let it get nice and warm. So, I'm going to go ahead and add my chips, and this is about a 10 ounce size. Now, to that, I'm going to add about one tablespoon of some Crisco shortening here. Now, what this will do is give it a nice sheen and also allow it to be nice and smooth and silky. All right, and then what you want to do is just continually stir this. You can see it's starting to melt down there at the bottom. Okay, so as soon as this is nice and smooth, I'm going to bring it back. Okay, we're almost getting there. Now, if you don't want to do the double boiler, you can certainly put these in the microwave and melt them there. I just don't have a really good track record with that. <laughs> I tend to overcook it or it just doesn't come out right. But when I do have the double boiler and add some Crisco shortening, that's what I get right there and it's really nice. So I'm just going to continue this until we get it nice and smooth, which we're, I think we're almost there. We're going to start dunking. Okay, so now I've dropped the heat on my burner to a low to kind of keep it all nice and warm and keeping it nice and smooth, just like that here. And I'm just going to take one of my pretzels right here and take the double end here and then just kind of push it into the chocolate on the front and the back. Make sure you get all the excess chocolate off. And then what we're going to do is lay it on the pan here. Now I've got two colors of holiday cheer here. <laughs> Some green and red sprinkles that I'm just going to lightly sprinkle on the top. 
There we go. All right. We're going to take our pretzel at the small end there, and we're going to dip the double end to the front and just kind of push it forward, push it to the back. Be very careful with your fingers. Get all the excess off. And then we're going to sprinkle, which I'm going to have my husband do. I'm going to chocolate these things, and then my husband's going to sprinkle. You just don't want me eating them while I'm chocolating them. <laughs> I know, right? Keep them busy. Okay, as soon as we get these all done, I'll bring you back. Okay, so we have them all covered in the chocolate right here. Now, at some point, I did add another tablespoon of some Crisco just to keep it at that consistency that we were looking for. And I kept it on the low heating just to keep it nice and warm as we were doing this so the chocolate wouldn't kind of seize up and get cold. All right. I got my taster here and he's going to try one for you. Okay, so we just pulled these out of the freezer and I placed these on our serving platters. Now, if you leave them in the freezer after you dunk them in the chocolate, it will help solidify the chocolate like that and that peanut butter mixture. It'll be really easy for people to pick these up. Look how nice these look. All right, we're gonna try one of these for you. Just the coolest little Christmas treat. They're good. Buckeye pretzel peanut butter bites. Mm. Welcome back, everyone. Happy holidays. We have a special treat for you today. Mm -hmm. We are making his all-time favorite Christmas candy. This comes back from my childhood. My grandmother, bless her soul, used to make this, and I absolutely loved it. Peanut brittle. Y'all ready? It's an easy seven ingredient recipe and it happens all in one pot. So nothing too complicated with this recipe. Nope. Now the trick is, there's just one trick and that is to get all of your ingredients ready to go before you even start putting anything in the pot here, okay? It moves pretty quickly and you gotta have your ingredients ready. So we're gonna bring you over here, show you everything and get started. You wanna make sure that you go ahead and prepare your sheet pan with either some parchment paper or a sill mat. The size pan that we're using is a 17 by 13 and it has a big lip going all the way around it. And you're gonna need something to spread your peanut brittle once it comes out of the pot. So make sure that you have this ready to go. You're gonna need a large pot. Now, you can use a saucepan, but the larger saucepan that you can find, the better. This is a five quart pot that we're using right here. And also, to help us get that mixture to the temperature that we need, we're using a candy thermometer. And it just attaches to your pot. It's a very cheap tool to use for your kitchen. So we will link it down below in the description box if you want to check it out. So it adjusts to fit any size pot that you have. Okay, we've got the first three ingredients that we're going to be working with here. Before we turn the burner on, we're going to go ahead and add two cups of white granulated sugar. We've got a half measuring cup here, and we're going to go four times into the sugar. And then we're just going to place that into our large saucepan. And then to that, we're going to add half a cup of water. We're going to stir this up until the sugar is combined with the water. Now this is a great candy to make. It will store for six to eight weeks in an airtight container. So you can put it in one of those fancy Christmas containers. You can send these off as Christmas gifts, bring them to Christmas parties, really fun. Mm -hmm. Now that we've got that all blended together, we've got some corn syrup. This is a light corn syrup. 
we're going to add one cup into the sugar and water and then stir that up. All right, and then we're going to combine that together. If you don't have light corn syrup, you can also substitute honey mm -hmm. cup per cup, and then you can also do a light molasses. Mm -hmm. At this point, we have attached our candy thermometer to our pot. You want to make sure that it doesn't hit the bottom of the pan, so it's not reading the temperature of the pan. It's reading the temperature of the sugar water here. We're going to turn our burner onto a medium heat. We're going to stir this occasionally. We want to bring the sugar water to a light boil, and then we're going to take a look at the temperature at that time. Now this takes a little bit of time to get to the 250 degrees that we need to reach at this stage. You're going to have a light boil, and that's what we're looking for, so you want to stir occasionally. And also, you can take your pastry brush and go around the outside of the pan on the edge there and take some of that sugar off. The most important thing is be patient with this step right here. You don't want to turn your burner up trying to get to that temperature or you might burn the sugar. So just relax on this stage. <laughs> Give it some time and some patience and you'll get there. We're going to get our peanuts ready. Now you want to use the salted peanuts and I say that because peanut brittle is like a sweet and salty treat. So you want that salt. But if you don't want the salt in there, you can do the lightly salted or the no salted peanuts, but that sweet and salty just makes it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. It does. So I've already measured out two cups of peanuts and we'll be putting that in as soon as we reach that 250 degree temperature. Okay, we're at the soft ball stage now. We need 10 more degrees to get to the hard ball stage. So you can see how thick it's getting and how foamy and bubbly it's getting and that's what you're looking for. Okay, we're gonna bring you back when we get to the hard ball stage. Okay, so we're at the 250 hardball stage. We're going to go ahead and add two cups of our dry roasted salted peanuts. We're going to stir this up till all the peanuts are coated and we want to get to 300 degrees. We're going to add two tablespoons of butter. We're going to add in one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. We're going to continue stirring that until we reach the 300 degrees. Ooh. Man, that smelled good. That smelled good, huh? Oh yeah. Oh my God, that was a pure hit of vanilla. Mm. Smells like candy. Sure does. Now this will take another five minutes or so to get to that 300. You know, all good things take a little time. Kind of like um, kneading dough from some yeasty biscuits. Mm-hmm. It's very important that you get to these temperatures. That way you have nice hard candy. And I'm gonna call it. Oh, you can see the color of this you guys changing. I'm gonna call it 300 right now. All right, we're, on, we're at 300 degrees. Turn we're gonna off turn the off the heat. Remove the thermometer. We're done with it. While he's stirring, we're going to add one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. Make sure you get your pan ready, because once we get that mixed up, y'all, look at the foam in action right here. That's what you want. Look at that. What we're going to do now is take it and we're going to pour it onto our sheet pan and start in the center, and then we're going to start spreading it. And you want to spread it very thin. You got to work fast with it because it will harden very quickly. The thinner you get it, the harder the candy will be. And as you can see that it is getting very thick. And be very careful. You don't want to touch the candy right now because it is hot. Just keep smoothing it out until you can't smooth it out even anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm. Doesn't that look good? Mm -hmm. That's what we got right there. That is the batch we're working with. 
Okay, it's very important that you allow this to cool completely. Now it should take about 30 minutes and it should be nice and hard and you're able to break it into pieces, which we're going to do mm -hmm. here in a little bit. So we'll meet you on the other side of 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes, y'all ready? We're gonna start breaking up some peanut brittle. Yeah, oh, <laughs> might have done it on the floor. And it's very hard. There it is. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Ow. Mm -hmm. And these are hard pieces. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is place them in our fun little Christmas bucket. You can hear that. It don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> you can break them all up and then put them, then you can have a piece. Oh. <laughs> so he's going to have fun breaking this up. There's my piece. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. How many people want to see that happen? <laughs> yeah, no. I'd be sicker than a dog. Look at this, y'all. Give that as a gift. Oh, look at the bottom. Look yeah. Shiny on top. Mm-hmm. My grandma would be proud. She would be. She's smiling from heaven. Save yep. me some. <laughs> Y'all give us some ideas down below for Christmas candy. Easy ideas. Easy ideas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one's mine. Where's yours? Right here. All right. We're gonna go try it for you. This made a lot, you guys. It was a 13 by 17 sheet pan and was almost filled up. Okay, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Oh my God, that's good. It's a hard candy, but mm. let me tell you, it melts in your mouth. It's delicious. Crunchy. That is awesome. Make your own. Mmm. <laughs> this takes a little patience and a candy thermometer. Yep. And make your own. Make them in batches. Mm. How long did it take to get up to temperature? About 20 minutes. 20, yeah. yeah probably about 20, 30. Mm -hmm. Give us a thumbs up on this one. Uh -huh. Don't forget to let us know down in the comments what other kind of candy you want to try. And if you're going to try peanut brittle, mm. that's his. Merry Christmas. You mean happy birthmas? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the bow. That's what we do around here. You get a Christmas and a birthday gift in one. <laughs> okay, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification. That way you'll always know when our shows are posted. We'll see you on the next episode. We have a dog looking at us right now because mm -hmm. she likes peanuts. Born into our soul. She is staring at us. Here she is. That's Bailey. Bailey, you gonna say hi? You gonna say hi? <laughs> She's always underfoot when I make something. Happy holidays, everyone, from Catherine's Plates to your house. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make Christmas bark. When you have kids that work and they have Christmas parties coming up and they need something, I'm going to tell you what, go in your pantry and you pull out all of your fun ingredients that you still have left after making all your cookies and make this one. It's so easy, but oh my gosh, it is a delight. Y'all ready? Let's go ahead and put this one together. Now when I say go in your pantry and pull everything out, I'm not kidding. <laughs> you can pull out cereal. Now a really good one for this holiday season is like Chex cereal. So I have rice right here pretzels you can have you know if you have sticks if you have the round ones the twist these are the buttery squares they're really cute i just broke these up <laughs> and then marshmallows i have some marshmallows in there so why not and we've got some m&ms now i use the m&ms 
to make the bugles the other day so y'all go check that one out if you haven't seen that if you love bugles you're gonna love those little treats oops here we go crushed pecans i think i forgot to tell y'all about those what's great about that is you can use walnuts you can use peanuts is a really good one especially around this time of year so any kind of nut will do and if you have other kinds of candy you can chop them up into little tiny pieces and use that I've got five things here and about one cup of each now i've got more of the m m's because they're red and green and it'll just make a really pretty color so about one and a half cups of m m's i'm just gonna put that into my large bowl one cup of mini marshmallows one cup of crushed pretzels now i just put these kind of like into bite-sized pieces the check cereal and pecans. So you want about five to six cups of whatever you're gonna put in there. We're gonna mix this all up. That looks good just in itself, doesn't it? You can get really creative with this. All right, we're going to set this aside and we're going to talk about how we're going to get this to stick together. Found a Chex. <laughs> you can use chocolate chips or you can use like white morsels. I'm going to be using an almond bark and it has vanilla flavoring in it. I used this also when I was making my bugle candy treats for Christmas. So if you haven't seen that one, I will link it down below so you can see those. You know, those bugles are those nice, crispy, salty treats. Yeah, go check that one out. This package is 24 ounces and we've already used six ounces in it for another recipe that I just told y'all about. So I have, let's see, 18 ounces of that almond bark in here. You can either do that or you can put 18 ounces of chocolate chips and melt those. So what I'm going to do is just place this in the microwave since this is the almond bark and the directions say put it in for one minute and 30 seconds and then we're going to give it a stir. Put it in every 15 seconds afterwards until we get it nice and smooth. Now while that's melting, this is what the package looks like right here. Or you can use the semi-sweet milk chocolate or the dark chocolate morsels. Or you can do the white chocolate chips, whichever one you want. Now before the almond bark is melted, you're going to want to prepare your baking sheet. I have a 13 by 17 baking sheet. It's got a nice lip on the edge edging here. Now I've just laid down a seal mat, seal pad, whatever you want to call it, or you can put some wax paper or even some parchment paper and fill up your pan here. Okay, let me go check on my bark, which is beeping right now. Let's see how that's doing. Oh, nice and creamy there. Still got a little bit more to go. Another 15 seconds. We still got a few lumps there. Okay, we have a nice smooth glossy bark here. What I'm going to do is bring my sheet pan over. There we go. I'm going to pour this all into the sheet pan here that's prepared. Now at this point you got to work pretty fast because it'll start setting up on you. But we want to get every last drop out of there because we got a lot of stuff to put in here. We're doing it this way because it's easier. Just take your spatula, smooth it out all over your pan. You don't want to go too thin with it, okay? All right, got quiet in here, didn't it? <laughs> all right, I'm gonna turn it sideways here, bring my candy over and all the good stuff in that bowl. We're going to sprinkle it all over. And you're going to want to pat it down good. You want to get it into that bark. My husband's like, if y'all know Thomas, he's like, that's going where? <laughs> I'm 
like my kids work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm going to be hiding him a piece. So he has a piece. All right. Hold on a minute. I'm going to go wash my hands really quick. I'm just going to use my offset spatula. These are great because they don't stick to anything hardly. So I'm going to start just smashing down more. So I just melted some white morsels just so I can try to dribble a little bit over the top here. Because what we're going to do now, that we got that going, if you have sprinkles, y'all sprinkle them on right now. Doesn't that look nice? Okay, we're not done yet. We need to put this in the freezer for about two to three hours to help set up and solidify everything together. Or you can place this in your refrigerator. I would just leave it in there longer. Or you can just leave this on your countertop for a while until it's nice and solid. Okay, I'll be back. I'm gonna finish this off. Okay, it's been several hours. I'm ready to break this up. Look at these. Perfect for a Christmas party, decorating the tree, putting them into a little container, and giving them out as gifts. It still maintains the crunchiness of those pretzels all the way through this, the M&Ms. It's definitely sweet and salty. Mm. All right, y'all, today I'm doing another famous recipe of mine during the holidays, and that is fudge. We cannot have Christmas without fudge. Ask my husband. He's like, where's the fudge? All right, so in my famous fudge recipe, I have, I use many marshmallows. We're gonna have some sugar, semi-sweet chocolate chips, evaporated milk, some butter, vanilla, and a salt. All right, y'all, let's just build this thing. All right, y'all, to get started, now I'm using an eight by eight baking dish and I sprayed the inside of it so I can lay some parchment paper down inside of it so I can pull this out. Now that's totally up to you if you wanna do that or you could just spray it and then pop it out from there. All right, so we got that situated. Now I'm gonna use a medium saucepan and in there, I'm going to add one and a half cups of sugar, two thirds cup of my evaporated milk, two tablespoons of butter, and one quarter teaspoon of salt. All right, y'all, so I have my saucepan now on my burner on high, and what you want to do is stir this constantly for four to five minutes. It's going to come to a rolling boil. All right, y'all, as you can see, I've got a rolling boil now, so I'm going to keep stirring this for four to five minutes. All right, y'all, look at this consistency. Look at that. I don't know if y'all can see it. Y'all see that? All right, we're going to go ahead now and add two cups of mini marshmallows. And we're going to add one and a half cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. All right, y'all. Get busy in there. <laughs> Just keep stirring vigorously. You don't want it stuck down on the bottom. For about one minute. We want those marshmallows to melt and it to be a nice smooth consistency. All right, this stage, go ahead and add your one teaspoon of vanilla and then mix away. It's going to get stiff, so you want to just keep working it. All right, at this stage, we're going to go ahead now and turn off our heat. Look at that. 
All right, we're gonna go ahead now and put this in our baking dish. Now we're gonna go ahead and pour it all into our baking dish. Spread out our fudge. All right, now at this stage, before it gets really solid, you wanna go ahead and you can put your toppings on. You wanna put nuts on it or marshmallows. We're gonna put marshmallows on here. And then what you wanna do is just kind of smush them in. All right, y'all, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the refrigerator for two hours so that it can get solid. Now you want to cover that before you put it in the refrigerator. You can use a lid to your dish or you can use saran wrap or tin foil, whatever, just cover it up. All right, y'all, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and I will see you back here in two hours to unveil our fudge. All right, so I've pulled my fudge out of the refrigerator. It was in there for, well, I would say three hours. <laughs> so because I used the parchment paper, you can see just how easy that comes out of here. All right. Look at that, y'all. Mmm, doesn't that look good? All right. We're going to take the parchment paper off, and then we're going to cut these into little squares. There we go. All right, so I'm finishing cutting up my fudge into chunks here to put into a nice tin. This piece right here, we're going to leave right here because my husband wants that. Right now, he's behind the camera. <laughs> so you have to be nice to the camera person. All right, y'all, look at, look at how thick that is. And you see how the marshmallows just hung right in there? Look at that. Oh, yeah. All right, now you see my tin? That's where I'm putting them all. Did he steal it? I think he did. All right. Mmm. All right, y'all, look at that. Do you see what that did? Oh my gosh, what a nice gift for people, right? Put it in a nice tin, and then you're gonna put your little lid on it. Oh, and then you're gonna take that to your favorite friend, work, church, <laughs> party. Camera person. Camera person. <laughs> He's not getting it all. All right, y'all. I want to thank you so much for coming to my show today. The cameraman already tried the chocolate fudge. <laughs> Shane has said yes, he wants more. So that's our answer to that. Happy holidays, everyone. Welcome back to Catherine's Plates, where today I'm going to show you how to make extra special treats for Christmas using my favorite treat, bugles. Now these are light and salty treats that'll be perfect for these sweet and salty treats. As, as you can see, mine are already open. <laughs> mm. If y'all know what these are, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you're gonna love these. These have a corn flavor to them, so y'all ready? Grab you a bag of bugles and let's make these. We can start making our bugle bells. So what you're gonna need is just a small bowl of the bugles. Now they look like this and they have a round circle and they come up to the tip. These are corn flavored and lightly salted, very crispy, light treat. So you wanna make sure you have plenty of those. You're gonna need some M&Ms. Now I'm using the Christmas M&Ms for the green and the red. And then you're just gonna need a sheet pan with some silicone matte parchment paper or just lightly spray it. I've got some almond bark here. Let me show you what that looks like. It comes in a pack like this and there's three, six, nine, 12 pieces in here. I'm just doing three right now. There's three ways that you can melt your almond bark for this recipe, and you can just follow the directions on the back of the package for that. 
Right now I'm just using a medium saucepan. It's about a three quart. I've got about two thirds of water in there filled up. I brought it to a boil over high heat. I put the bark inside and I'm letting the steam heat up the bowl, which is heating up the bark. When you do it this way, it takes about eight minutes to melt your bark down. Now just keep stirring it around with a spatula so it'll melt faster. Now when you keep it over a steam bath like this, it'll keep your chocolate nice and warm. So once you pull it out of the microwave or the oven, it'll start cooling down and it'll get thicker and thicker. So this way you can lower your temperature, keep it on a low to where that steam is always keeping your bark nice and melted and smooth. All right, I'm gonna go ahead now and turn off the burner. This is melted sufficiently. Okay, we're gonna take our bugle with the edge side down, put it into our melted bark, swirl it around until you get a nice edge on it. We're gonna take an M&M, hold it out. We're gonna turn it over and place it on our bottom of the bugle that's coated with that. We're going to place it on our sheet pan here, flat, and let it cool. Bugle, edge side down, run it through the melted bark. Give it a nice edging like that here. Take your M&M. Now you can either insert it about halfway in and just let it sit like that. And lay it on your pan. Okay, this is how many I made. What we're gonna do is you wanna let these set so you can set these off to the side on your countertop or you can place these in the refrigerator to really set up good. And then you can take them off and have them as fun Christmas treats. You can fill up your cookie boxes with these for extra little snacks. More bugles. All right, let me show you how to make our elf shoes. You can still use the almond bark that we made right here. If you need to add some more, you can just put another block in and melt it in with this one right here. The pot of water is still steaming, so our bark is still melted here and nice and smooth, which is great. You're gonna need your bugles. You're gonna need some sprinkles. I have red sprinkles. This is the very fine red sprinkles, and then I have the very fine green sprinkles right here. So what I did was I put some on a plate, the red, put green on another plate, and then I just kind of mixed the red and the green. And again, you're just gonna need a sheet pan with a sill pad on it or parchment paper. Now I already have one completed there for you. So let's go ahead and see how I did that. Y'all, you can't help but eat these along the way, let me tell you. I ate a few of those bells. Oh, they're so good. What a sweet and salty treat for the holidays. So we're gonna take our bugle and we're gonna dip it on both sides. So we're gonna dip the pointy tip into the melted bark. So we just have a, a tip there. And then we're going to run it through the red. That's the tip of the shoe. And then what we're gonna do is just turn it upside down, put it into the melted bark right there. Now we wanna coat his sock. So I'm gonna run it through the green and the red. And then we're just gonna place it onto our sill pad. That way it can solidify up. All right, let's go ahead and finish these up. Now if you watched me make the bells, then you saw my instructions on making the almond bark using the double boiler.
Okay, what fun to make these for your little gift boxes for Christmas. You can put them in with your cookies, your brownies, whatever you want to give away. Just insert some of these. What fun. We're going to let these sit for a while to solidify. I'm going to bring you back and show you both treats. Okay, if you have some mason jars with some lids, you can pack them in there and give these as treats. I'm going to push them all back in. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be fun? These are the elf feet, and these are the bugle bells. Sweet and salty treats. These have the M&M, so it's a nice chocolate treat. And then these have the little candies, sprinkles on them. Okay, I'm going to give them a try for you. These are light, crispy, got a corn flavor to them. Go get you a bag of bugles. Which ones are you making? Both of them? Get your kids involved, get your family involved and have them make these with you. Little gifts that you can give somebody, perfect for the holidays. Okay guys, give me a thumbs up on this one, comment down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification. That way you'll always know when my shows are posted. I'll see you on my next episode.